television highlights of the news of yesteryear. Worst earthquake in years makes shambles of Serbian countryside and breaks up scores of Balkan towns. Night of March 8, 1931 was black and cold, lashed by terrifying storms. And then, just a few minutes before two, violent tremors rocked and shattered the earth, sending thousands racing panic-stricken from crumbling homes and tumbling buildings to storm-wrecked safety of open fields. One town, Valandova, is totally wrecked. Near Garaba, there's loss of livestock, too, as mountainsides collapse. But here are lucky those stunned survivors, doing best they can till help arrives. Food is as scarce as shelter, and what little there is goes to children first. Following initial quake, seismograph in Belgrade records a series of tremors for 10 hours and rumblings of earth are felt and heard in Bulgaria, Greece, and Yugoslavia. Destruction of bridges, railways, and communications lines delays bringing of food and clothing and aid in digging for dead and injured. But survivors do best they can till official help can reach them. Reports of damage and death are scattered and varied, with fatalities estimated at from 50 to 500. Destruction of property runs high as the tinderbox of turbulent Europe suffers eruption worse than war. Hey, look, fellas, girls. Cambridge Bowl, Harvard College, is filled with women for annual class day exercises in middle 1920s. In raw, raw days, graduation is gala affair. Alumni take their hats off to graduating class, and in stands, mothers and sweethearts cheer another batch of John Harvard's stalwart sons. As climax, there's battle of confetti between grads and audience. No casualties, and a good time is had by all. That phone call from coast to coast is old stuff today, but here it's January 25th, 1915, and lines from Atlantic to Pacific have just been completed. In San Francisco, Mayor Rolfe Center makes initial call across transcontinental telephone lines. Assistants listen in and record historic conversation as Mayor of Pacific Coast City talks to youthful Mayor Curley of Boston. But this isn't full extent of long distance phoning. In 1921, telephone lines are laid by submarine cable between Key West, Florida and Havana, Cuba. April 11th, job is finished. But first, man must cope with laying of longest cable in history, up to then. Boys mark route of underwater line, and accomplishment marks historic step in the conquest of man's communication with man. High jinks in a Harlem dance hall. It's 1927, and the spirit of Charles Lindbergh's recent leap of the Atlantic is cause of this ballroom bone bending. It's the Lindy Hop, before old age crept up on it and toned it down. Here it is being demonstrated by some of its rubber boned originators. That's dancing. That's dancing, the Lindy Hop. Here in the long ago is Ethel Levy, better known as Mrs. George M. Cohan I. At one time, Cohan's dancing partner in days of vaudeville, and mother of Georgette M. Cohan. Lovely Georgette was born to a life behind the footlights, followed parental footsteps, and became an actress. Heiress to one of the brightest names ever to glitter in Broadway lights, Georgette Cohan. Here 
at his desk is Daniel Froman, leading theatrical producer of yesteryear. With Brother Charles, he did much to make Broadway greatest street in theatrical world. Alone, he formed Daniel Froman's Stock Company, which further improved Broadway's reputation and his. Daniel Froman, Broadway immortal. It's May 11th, 98, and here's French actress Lily Demita on her first day in America. With her right is Will Hayes, welcoming her in behalf of Hollywood, which has just secured her for series of motion pictures. Best of them was The Cockeyed World, a talkie in which Lily's delightful accent made her rage of moviegoers everywhere. It's 1921, and in Dedham, Massachusetts, here are Nicola Sacco and Bartholomew Vanzetti on way to courthouse to seek new trial and reversal of sentence of death imposed on them for murder in payroll robbery year before. It was no world-shaking crime, but agitation in radical papers here and abroad caused riot and death. In Paris, U.S. Ambassador Herrick was target of bomb. In one Sacco Vanzetti demonstration in France, 20 persons died. In time, case grew to incredible international importance. So here, in 1927, Sacco and Vanzetti once more appear in court. Appeal is once more denied, but public opinion so favors doomed men that Massachusetts Governor Fuller is forced to form advisory committee of leading Americans to consider reversal of decision and full part. Verdict of guilty is charged. And on night of August 22nd, 1927, the payoff for a payroll murder is death for Sacco and Vanzetti. Meet Miss Theodosia Goodman. Watch that door and you'll see the most beautiful girl in the world. Yes, here she comes, tiptoeing gracefully across the room. Miss Theodosia Goodman of Cincinnati, Ohio, showing the stuff that makes her irresistible. Oh, by the way, Miss Goodman is also rather well known as Theta Barra. Now you'll sit up and take notice, won't you? And notice the effect Miss Barra has on our hero. Who can blame him if he thinks he's dreaming? But no, he realizes this vision of loveliness is true. He can even reach out and claw, I mean, touch her. And she's for real. And this whole thing is for real one of the vampire passion-packed motion picture starring Theta Barra in 1915. There's no record on identity or career of the hero in this scene, but there's an ex-movie actor in our town who ever since 1915 has been walking around in circles and talking to himself. ships for better flying. It's February 21st, 1925, and with designer Igor Sikorsky in cockpit, giant passenger plane is ready for test flight from Roosevelt Field, Westbury, Long Island. Sikorsky watches as 11 passengers enter his big ship for trip which will take them for 100 mile an hour jaunt over city of New York. It's all aboard as famed ex-Russian flyer does another successful pioneering job for aviation. another success for big ships. On coast of England, August 9th, 1925, huge flying boat is prepared for takeoff. British Air Minister Sir Samuel Hoare is aboard, and gigantic cloud cutter will attempt flight through dangerous skies of North Sea. Takeoff is without incident, and so is the flight. In early 1920s, Paris models have plenty of sparkle, but the synthetic jewelry they sport outshines them easily. How much candle power can diamonds have? Quick, my dark glasses. Pretty, isn't she, in shining white silk? But she's lost in the glitter of rhinestone necklace and bracelets. Can you see the 
the pin this lovely girl is wearing? Well, here's a good look. Can you picture that? Well, we just did. Here's a pair of pear-shaped earrings. Very ornate. The girl, too. Drake relays in Des Moines, Iowa, April 28, 1928. Thrilling meet comes to fast finish with most honors going to Illinois, tops in Western Conference track. But Iowa wins mile and quarter mile relays with this quartet. And two mile run goes to contestant from Badger State. Runners are bunched most away, but in final stretch, winner's laurels go to Wisconsin as tape is broken by Bullimore. In winner's circle, but out of breath. And here's the ever popular 100 yard dash. In close finish with George Hester of Michigan, winner is none other than touchdown maker Jack Elder of touchdown making Notre Dame. 70,000 witness 1939 running of Santa Anita handicap. And all eyes are on Kayak the second as they're off to a good start with which see on inside taking early lead, specify second, main man third. Kayak the second, a poor and unpromising seventh. Track is fast, and leaders are setting grueling pace. As field passes grandstand, Kayak the second is still far back. $100,000 rides with winner as horses head down back stretch with which C still leading, Kayak moving into fourth. At far turn into home stretch, it's which C first, specifies still second, Kayak now third and moving up outside the leaders taking center of the track. And with Jockey Adams driving hard, it's Kayak the second coming home fast. Kayak the second striding into the lead and pulling for the wire in victory. It's Kayak the second, first. <laughs>